Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number three from the specimen paper of the Pure Mathematics P3 Cambridge 9709 syllabus. And this question here is about the graphs of modulus functions and modulus equations, which is a topic that you will only find in the P3 papers um, subsequent to 2020. This was not a topic in P3 prior to that. And so if you look at the older papers, you won't see such questions. Um, and we're going to go through this question now. So here it says, sketch the graph of y equals the modulus of 2x minus 3. A quick introduction to what the modulus means. The modulus is like the magnitude of something, or you could think of it as how far something is away from zero on the number line regardless of its direction so for example the number five and the number minus five they're both the same distance away from zero on the number line they're both five units away from five from zero on the number line so the magnitude of the modulus of negative five is going to be five and the modulus of five is also going to be five so anything that goes inside the modulus sign it's if it's negative it becomes positive if it's positive it stays as it is basically right so that's how the modulus so uh, that's like a brief description of the meaning of the modulus sign so if we're going to sketch the graph of the modulus of 2x minus 3 well this the value of y here can never ever be negative because whatever value comes in here it's going to be positive right so if we were to sketch a graph of this, we don't need to make a table of values or anything. We have to just show, when you're doing a sketch, you have to show uh, the places where the graph will cross the coordinate axes. So when you're drawing a graph of something or sketching a graph of something like this graph here, a modulus graph, if the whole of the function is inside the modulus sign, then you it's like you draw y equals 2x minus 3. As normal so if you were to draw this normally um, it would basically cross the y-axis at minus 3 and it would cross the x-axis when y is 0 so when 2x minus 3 is 0 so x is going to be 3 over 2 or 1.5 so it's going to go through these two points if you were to draw it imagine it, you had no um, one second you have no modulus sign there you're just drawing the graph it would look something like this. That's how you draw it. That would be the graph of y equals 2x minus 3. But it has a modulus sign. So these values here, down here, will become positive. Okay, so for example, if I put x equals 0 in here, I'll have y equals the modulus of negative 3. Well, what is the modulus of negative 3? Well, it's 3. So when when x is 0, y is going to be up here at, my, at positive 3. So basically what's going to happen is this part of the graph is going to reflect in the x-axis. It's going to go like this. I should have drawn it the other way around. It's going to go like this. Okay, that's, that's what it's going to be. So this part of the graph actually won't exist it's going to go up to there and then it's going to reflect in the x-axis let's try and draw it a bit more evenly and that's how it will look so basically when you're drawing the modulus function and the whole of the modulus graph is inside the function like this you know the whole of this is inside there then whatever is below the x-axis is reflected in the x-axis to the positive side Okay, so it became basically all these y values are negative are going to have the same x value but now positive y values. All right, so that's how the graph of this function would look. You could even think of it as this is the positive argument of the curve and this is the negative argument of the curve. This is going to be actually the equation of this, this branch is going to be when you change the sign of everything in here. So it's going to be like basically 3 minus 2x as you can see. The gradient is negative 2, and it passes through 3 on the y-axis. As we know, y equals mx plus c. Okay, so 
In total, this is a graph of y equals the modulus of 2x minus 3. Right? This is called the positive argument of the curve. When you leave it, the, the, you just you know just get rid of the modulus sign without doing anything. And this is the negative argument of the curve where you change the sign of everything inside the modulus sign. Okay, so that's how you can sketch the graph. Then part B says solve the inequality 3x minus 1 is greater than 2x the modulus of 2x minus 3. Now people um, will try to uh, solve this in lots of different ways. Now the way I like to do something like this is by sketching. Okay, I'd like to sketch this. All right, so first of all, we've got to find out where does where do these two graphs intersect? Okay, so y equals 3x minus 1 is going to be a graph that goes through minus 1 on the y-axis and it has a gradient of 3. So it's going to go through the x-axis at basically when, um, when y is at 1 third. So the graph of y equals 3x minus 1 will be a graph that looks something like this. It's going to be a graph that looks something like this. It's going to have a, a high gradient. It's going to go through those two points. Okay, it's going to be a steeper gradient than that graph. So this is y equals 3x minus 1. Now that graph here, I'm going to draw that in a different color to show that it's a different part of the question, just to make it clear. All right, that, that graph here, this is for part B, okay, um, you can see that it's going to intersect the curve at this point, at the, the, uh, this graph, this, this, at this point alone, okay. Now, if, if I were to uh, try to find where they intersect okay um, just purely algebraically without thinking about the graph then you'd have a problem so I'm going to first find where they intersect let's find the places where they intersect the place or places where they intersect okay so what you would do is you would I mean if you were doing this blindly without sketching the graph then you would say okay they would intersect when 3x minus 1 is equal to 2x minus 3 and also when 3x minus 1 is equal to the negative value of this, which is 3 minus 2x. Okay, so you can say at those two places they would intersect. All right, so you can then solve this. 3x minus 2x is equal to minus 3 plus 1. So x is equal to minus 2. And here you'll have 3x plus 2x, which is going to be 5x. 3x plus 2x is equal to 3 plus 1. So you have 5x is equal to 4, so x is equal to 4 over 5. Now, we can see here that these graphs only intersect in one place. There's no way that they're going to intersect again. So how did we get two values when we solve this algebraically? Well, the reason why we get two values when we solve this algebraically is because when we solve this equation here, okay, it's as if we're assuming that this line this line here continued on it's as if this line here continued on okay this line does continue on this this doesn't have the modulus sign on it okay but you see there's going to be a place where algebraically if i solve this equation I can see that this, this, if, I, if, if, the, if it was just this line and that line, yes, they would intersect at that point here, which is when x is minus 2. But what happens is the graph doesn't go down there. It comes up here, it reflects up. So this is the only point that we're looking for. This is the correct point. So we can see graphically that this is the correct point, And we know that, therefore, this answer is rejected. So we know that x equals 4 fifths is where they intersect. And then I can look at the inequality. All right, so I know that this value here is 4 over 5. So I can see now where is the graph 3x, y equals 3x minus 1, greater than. When is it greater than? Well, what does that mean when it's above the other graph? So I can see, for example, if I choose a value of x over here, okay, the modulus graph is greater than the y equals 3x minus 1. All the values up to this point, if I choose any x value up to this point, the modulus graph will be greater than the straight line graph that we have. At this point, when x equals 4 fifths, they will be the same. But past this point, y equals 3x minus 1 is going to have a bigger value. It's going to be greater than 
the modulus of 2x minus 3 because for example if I choose a value of x over here okay if I choose this x value you can see this is going to have a greater value than that value so for when x is greater than 4 fifths when x is greater than 4 fifths is going to be the solution to our inequality x is greater than there's no equal sign so greater than 4 fifths and there is our answer to this question okay so in these type of questions it's always good to sketch in fact they told us to sketch and most questions they, you, they will tell you to sketch the graph and solve the equation so it's always a good idea to sketch now people choose different ways of solving this some some people would also use um, an algebraic method by um, squaring both sides to find where they intersect okay so they'll say when 3x minus 1 squared is equal to 2x minus 3 squared when you've got an inequality sign don't solve inequalities by squaring both sides because um, you know sometimes that causes things to be untrue for example I know that 3 is um, less is greater than sorry negative 3 okay but if I square both sides then this is going to become 9 that's become 9 it's not going to be great they're going to be the same so um, you know you have to be careful like for example let's use 3 is greater than um, negative 7 for example if I square both sides this is going to become 9 this is going to become 49 okay 9 is not greater than 49 it doesn't hold true anymore so you shouldn't square both sides especially with inequalities but to find where they intersect you can square both sides so some people would square both sides of this of this inequality and that will take care of the modular sign but then again you will notice what happens it's more hassle here I think 9x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 and when you try to solve it you have 5x squared minus um, 6x minus 6x plus 12x and plus 1 minus 9 is minus 8 is equal to 0 so when you try to solve this you have two numbers which multiply to give you uh, negative 40 and when you add them negative 40x squared and when you add them you get negative 6x um, let's say let's have a look at that um, 40 10 times 4 right 10 times 4 so here you have 5x squared and then you have minus 8 they multiply to give you minus 40x squared these two must also multiply to give you minus 40x squared as I said you can have minus 10x and plus uh, 4x okay so you can take out the common factor here 5x and 5x times x is 5x squared 5x times minus 2 is minus 10x and x times uh, plus 4 is going to be 4x so we end up with 5x plus 4 times x minus 2 equals 0 so we get the same answers x equals actually it should be what have I done wrong here that should be plus 6x all right so that should be plus 6x I know there's something wrong there so that should be the other way around it should be plus 10x and minus 4x my bad there some of you might have spotted that already but I'm going to correct it of course minus 6x plus 12x is plus 6x so there's my mistake there so this should say 5x minus 4 and x plus 2 okay so that should be 5x minus 4 and x plus 2 okay so you end up with this so you have x equals 4 fifths and x equals negative 2 okay now supposing you didn't have a sketch supposing you were just uh, you know finding where they you know basically where they're equal to each other without a sketch how would you verify that both answers are correct you should always check that the answers are correct with modulus so we have 3x minus 1 and we have is greater than or let's say equal to the modulus of 2x minus 3 we're trying to find if these both solutions are correct if we try x equals minus 2 in here this is going to give you minus 6 minus 1 which is minus 7 and I try x equals minus 2 is equal to the modulus of and you're going to have the modulus of negative 7 now this is not true because the modulus of negative 7 is positive 7 not negative 7 okay the modulus of negative 7 will always be a positive answer this doesn't make sense the modulus of a number can never be negative so x minus 2 x equals minus 2 is rejected when we try 4 fifths okay in this equation you have 3 times 4 fifths which is 12 over 5 
12 over 5 minus 1 is going to be 7 over 5 equals and you have the modulus here 2 times 4 fifths that's going to be 8 over 5 minus 3 which is um, sorry 2 times 3 2 times 4 fifths that's going to be 8 over 5 minus 3 sorry 3 is how much over 5 that's 15 over 5 so you have 7 over 5 is equal to the modulus of 8 minus 15 which is minus 7 over 5 now this is true the modulus of negative 7 fifth is positive 7 fifth because when you put something in the modular sign, the minus sign is going to be cancelled out, You're left with 7 fifths. So therefore, this is the solution for the equation. And therefore, once we found the solution for the equation, we can then see from the graph that when x is greater than 4 fifths, that's when you have your inequality being satisfied. Okay, so that's how we can deal with this question. I would deal with it in this way, simply, right? Without even having to, you know, verify that this is the right solution in terms of, you know, you know, um, you can just see. I know that they, they intersect when this branch of the graph meets this. So I know that when I solve these two equations, I'm going to get this point. And any other point that I might get, if I if I use this with that, they're not going to intersect because this doesn't go that far. Okay, so that would be the easiest way, especially if you asked to sketch the cur curve or the graphs to answer such a question so you know this is a new topic in this syllabus all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to um put in this um area at the end of the video a link to the other questions on the specimen paper and also here a link to other questions from this particular topic of modulus functions um in um the cambridge syllabus or cambridge papers because this is a new topic i'm also and plus because i have just really started right now doing these cambridge um, papers i'm also going to put here a link to the modulus graphs in uh, p3 of um, edexcel okay so you'll have lots of modulus questions from edexcel which is very similar type of questions and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon